First off, thanks to the, all the great YouTubers who helped get me started in 3D printing. And based on my last review of this machine, which everyone said was long and rambling, I'm doing a very condensed version. I'm going to show you prints. I'm just going to talk about the key points of why I think the EPAX X1 is a great choice now that it has had a price reduction down to $399 plus there's a coupon on Amazon. So it's got a more stable uh, Z-axis than other cheaper printers. It's built out of all metal. It's got a better enclosure that the way the lid opens, it, it opens kind of halfway into the machine so that you can actually put it up against the wall and open it. And it's just a nice quality of life thing. The way it opens and closes for me makes it easier to remove prints. Uh, it seems to print a little better than my Photon, which I have amazing results on my Photon, but the EPAX, when I hold my models next to each other, the EPAX just looks slightly better, and I have a little comparison coming up. Uh, it's got a build plate that comes pre-leveled. You do not have to level this thing when you get it. It is literally plug and play, and here's a picture of the build plate. This thing has four screws in it. Once it's leveled, you basically never, ever have to re-level it, as far as I can tell, and it did come perfectly calibrated out of the factory like they said it would, which I did not believe, but I got the machine, I inserted the build plate, inserted my vat, poured resin in, did a print, and I got the cobalt that you're going to see in a little bit in the comparison photos. Came out perfectly right out of the box. So pretty incredible experience that I didn't have to do anything with it, and you never ever have to basically level it as far as I can tell. So that makes it a lot easier on the user. The USB port is located in a very convenient spot uh, toward the very front of the machine as opposed to in the back on the Photon, so that's a little bit better quality of life. The LCD screen comes with tape around it already. You know, you're supposed to tape up your screens if you have a Mars or Photon so that, uh, you know, if you have a resin leak, it doesn't infiltrate the machine. It might be a small thing, but this comes uh, pre-taped very nicely. It's just another quality of life thing. Uh, it's got a dual Z-Rod axis, which uh, just means that you don't get any Z-Wobble at all, and maybe that's the reason I'm getting even better prints out of this than off of my Photon. And again, not to knock the Photon, it's an amazing machine. If you look at my other videos, I've got amazing prints off it. But this thing, like I said, just prints a little bit better. So you're looking at a bunch of prints I did. If you watch my other videos, you'll see a lot of these I did also print on my Photon because to do comparisons, obviously, I want the print models that I printed before. And like I said, when I hold them side by side, these all look just a tiny bit better. So I do think the machine uh, is a higher quality. The components, it, the whole machine is like everything's metal except the little portion of plastic on the front, which, you know, just the front panel. Everything else is solid metal. It's really heavy. And I'm not an engineer, so I didn't take it apart, but just reading what the components were from other people, other engineers, uh, it, they seem to be a higher quality components than in the cheaper printers, which makes sense. You're paying more. Hopefully, you're getting a better machine overall. Uh, the other thing, uh, you know, it's not from me, but from other people on Facebook groups, I've seen that a lot of people in the EPAX group who own an EPAX and a Photon or an EPAX and a Mars all say that the EPAX is superior to the to the photon of the Mars, which again makes sense. It's more expensive, but the reason I'm doing this review now and why I think this is all important is right now the EPAX X1 has had a price drop, and now it's only a hundred dollars more than the photon of the Mars. So at only a hundred dollars more, all these quality of life improvements you get over the other machines, plus better components, plus the biggest thing to me is the faster cure time. The cure time on this thing is incredible, and just your workflow, everything. You know, I can just do so much more because it prints so fast fast and accurate and that's what you want so i do think this is a great machine i highly recommend it this is a very short review because i've i have a 30 minute review where i go into why i didn't buy one at first and a whole bunch of other different stuff that a lot of people said they didn't want to hear they just want to see prints and get my opinion so that's what i'm doing in this video so my opinion is uh that for the price this is the best machine and for a hundred dollars more than a photon or mars this is the machine you should be buying because a hundred dollars is not a big difference. I know money's different for different people, but $100, come on, is not that much. You can skip a few meals out, a few drinks, whatever, and make up that 100 bucks. So with that, let's look at the comparison uh, between my Cobalt prints off the EPAX and the Photon. So you're looking here, and you see two things that look kind of the same. Now I'm going to show you this. The one on the left is the EPAX. The one on the right is the Photon. And again, if you look just quickly, kind of look the same. It's hard to put your finger on it. But like I said, when I'm looking at them in my hand right now, uh, the EPAX one just looks a little better, a little crisper, a little cleaner, a little more well-defined. So let, let's zoom in on some features and see you know, where I kind of see those differences when I look closer. If you look at the fletching on the arrows, which I've circled here for ease, uh, 
the Epax one, and it might even be hard, even though these are high-rise photos, it might be a little tough to tell. The Epax fletching uh, came out just a little better. It's a little crisper, a little clearer. It looks a little more, quote-unquote, 3D-ish to me when I'm looking at it in my hand. I mean, I'm not knocking my photon print. You see that photon print is great. But the Epax one, you know, is just a little better. And then if you look now at the fangs or teeth, I guess fangs would be the right word, the fangs on the Epax one, you can see just a little bit more definition. So this is a tiny little print also, by the way. This thing is only 15 millimeters tall. So the fact that I can pick up extra definition on the Epax is a good thing. It makes it, you know, obviously easier to paint and stuff like that. And I just think overall, like I said, when you hold the model in your hand and look at it kind of holistically without your eye being able to pick out lots of different little things that are better, uh, the print just kind of looks better. So... That's um, like I said. I'm ending this review now because people said they didn't want me rambling and babbling, in, in, you know, with a whole bunch of stuff. Just you know, show the prints. Tell me about the machine. Is it good? So yes, the machine is amazing, and I do think now when it was two hundred dollars more than the Photon or Mars, uh, I'm iffy on it. At a hundred dollars more, I definitely think it's worth it. Uh, the increased printing speed, better machine, better build quality, and in the end, I think better prints as well. Plus, all the quality of life stuff, like it coming pre-leveled is amazing to me. And, and never having to mess with that print bed, the print plate, build plate again is also amazing. So I do think at this price point, people should definitely be looking at this really hard. And if you have the extra $100, I definitely think, you know, this is an upgrade over to, over the Photon or Mars. And I'm going to come back and, and do this review again in about three or four months when I've done another, you know, 500 prints and show you guys and, and give a, uh, a review on how I think the machine has held up. But since I've only had a few days, obviously I can't do that now. But my initial impressions are people should be buying this machine. I just don't think word has gotten out enough about how good this machine actually is. So that's it. Hope you guys liked my condensed review based on feedback. And uh, stay tuned to my channel. Please like, please subscribe. If you're getting into resin printing, I have a bunch of videos that will help you, spare you from the trouble and heartache that I went through when I first started resin printing. So if you watch my vids, life will be a lot easier for you. Okay, again, thank you for watching, enjoy, and happy 3D printing.